Hey everyone, welcome back to the Growing Together podcast with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. A podcast where we focus on talking about growth and everything that it encompasses. There are so many areas that we can grow in, whether it be our career, personal life, on social media. Um, So we chose this as our, I guess overall focus is because it just impacts so many areas of our life and there's a lot of different things that we can discuss on this podcast so yeah that's pretty much if you're new here that's who we are um just want to see caesar how are you doing on this fine morning doing good you know as always we have our coffee um different mugs today got this all set up this morning usually we do it before the night before but getting used to getting it set up pretty quickly now so um, I just can take a little sip of my coffee to wake up, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how was your week, Caesar? We're filming this on a Saturday, so um, obviously we've been through the entire week. It's been good, actually. We went out yesterday to go film some B-roll for a video on my channel, on my YouTube channel, where I create content, and I filmed another video too. It's getting it edited. Um, it's been pretty good. I know you've been working here too as well. Yeah, I work literally out of this. Caesar works out of this room too. But I work like behind the camera where it's set up um, because I work remotely. And that's, I mean, it's nice. I definitely like remote work. Um, Crazy experience before we start the podcast is, uh, as you know, Caesar and I are engaged, which means I have an engagement ring that I'm not wearing right now because we had to get it cut off in the emergency yeah. room because my finger got really swollen and I couldn't get the ring off and Caesar and I tried everything and we couldn't get the ring off. So we had to get it cut, unfortunately, and now we have to get my ring repaired. Um, but I was much rather repair the ring than lose my finger. Yeah, so, that's true. It was pretty scary, so, <laughs> but, you, know, you know. I was trying not to panic. <laughs> Caesar was panicking, though. I don't know if anyone's seen um, that episode of The Office where Michael's like, stay calm, stay calm. That was like Caesar's demeanor. And it was freaking me out because at first I wasn't very freaked out about the wing being stuck. I was just going to go to sleep and hope like the swelling of my finger went down and try to take it off in the morning. But then I started to get really scared because Caesar seemed to be really scared about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, we got to get this wing off. So yeah. Um, that was an interesting experience. Um, yeah, and I guess this happens a lot because I've got a really cool tool at the ER that they use. No, it does. You look it up on Google. It's a very common thing that happens. Uh, they, you know, there's a few like hacks to try to get it off before you have to resort to the last thing is cutting it off and it sucks, but I mean, (laughs) yeah. I'm pretty sure it sucks more for Caesar, I mean, because he paid for the ring. No, but. I mean, that's like, again, I care more about your finger. It's just it sucks that we have to go through uh, go through cutting it off. Uh, going into the ER and cutting it off because we have to wait two hours. A bunch of people there, um, situations that were happening, it's kind of, yeah, yeah it's like, what's the going ER on? The ER at, like, midnight, like, to 2 a.m. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, definitely an interesting place. Definitely um, an interesting place. But, yeah, so that was... That was, I think, not the highlight. I mean, it was low light, I guess, of my week. Um, but I pretty much just did low lights. A lot of work, other than that. Um, I mean, you plan this podcast too. So. Yeah, I mean, I plan. Yeah. I plan these podcasts when I have time during the week. Um, like what we're gonna talk about. So, but Caesar doesn't know what we're gonna talk about today. But this, I thought, would be an interesting topic to discuss and kind of the theme of today's episode is who are we and why are we here and my when I think of this obviously I think of how we define ourselves like if I ask if I meet you in like on the street and we start talking I'm like oh like who is Caesar Santos how would you define yourself hmm (laughs) <laughs> uh, many things i guess you know uh I, I one just doesn't come to mind but like like i uh, for some reason i immediately think to what i do for a living that def- that defaults to like the immediate thing of who i am as a person and what i do 
So I would start there. And then I would start like whether, you know, obviously if I'm married or, or, or whatnot, or I have kids, then I would say that. And yeah, I mean, that's the first thing that, that comes to my mind. And that's, I find that so interesting because I think that's a lot of our culture is like, oh, the one of the like frequent questions we ask people is like, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Because that's kind of how we categorize people. Um, and I had a coworker when I worked at Target who told me um, she had done a lot of traveling and that like in the United States specifically, we're like kind of one of the only places that kind of define ourselves by our job titles. Like mm. our like titles at work hold so much value to us and it becomes a part of our identity. And I don't think that's necessarily necessarily a bad thing, but it can have some bad implications. You know, it can have some negative implications when you do that. And I think there is kind of a change that has to happen like within ourselves when we're growing is like kind of setting that apart from who you are. It doesn't have to be your entire personality, your entire source of contribution to this world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that. I, I can see that. Um, I mean, cause I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of stereotypes that come to mind, um, um, where like someone's defined by, by things that they do, you know, whether it's a person who rides horses or something like that, you know, like very common one that I just recently learned about, but like, or people that like work on cars or, or whatever the case is. And it's the, that, the, I mean, for them, if it want, if they want to be defined by that, I guess, you know, they want to be defined by that but i guess what you're saying is that that could have a negative consequence i think there are negative consequences like i don't think it's necessarily bad to categorize yourself as like you know what you do for work but i do think there are some negative um implications and i think it also goes down to like not even just what we do for work we define ourselves as the things we value Mm, so a lot of times we do that was we define ourselves with like our job title because we value the work we do which isn't again it's not bad but like you know when it becomes everything to you like you've got to find other things that like you know shape you as a person as an individual and i think that's something like i've struggled with in my life is that we have this culture of like putting people in boxes and labeling them based off certain boxes and like this happens like whether like it's race ethnicity it happens with um like um with careers but it also happens with like um interest like it's and i don't think we do it for a negative reason like i think when we define ourselves as certain things it helps us find community in people that also enjoy the same things we do so i i think that's a like one of the reasons why we do it but like for me i struggle with that because i feel like i can't simply be defined by like one term you know i am a lot of things and like to ask who i am is just a question that would take forever to answer if i was answering honestly but like when we ask that question we often don't ask with the like wanting the full picture you know what in the full picture of who that person is. is Well, it's only like a minor glimpse. Yeah, we're yeah. just asking for like a quick, like ten seconds. Who are you? Like elevator pitch elevator type pitch, thing. Yeah. And the highlight. Like yeah, you say it's like a highlight. Yeah, and I think it also goes back to like this, like kind of conversation ties into like identity, like and finding who you are is sometimes a hard process because like it can be confusing. It has a lot to do with growth and self-awareness self-awareness and i remember when i was in college or going to college my brother we we were at home he made a joke he was like oh sunny is the type of person that's going off to college to find herself you told me that and people like throw that (laughs) sorry (laughs) people throw that around like it's a negative thing to go and do something to find yourself but I'm going to be honest, it was a way for me to find out who I was as a person. I think we are often put in these situations to, like, that don't really allow us to fully 
understand who we are as people like you're kind of like when you're young and like up until like high school and you graduate like you're kind of in the same setting for a very long time you're just getting an education I mean you're going to like you're doing sports maybe you're in activities but not everyone has those opportunities to kind of go out and figure out who they are at such a young age Mm -hmm. um and like so for me when I was going to college I was like this is the first time I'll be alone this is the first time where I kind of get to think for myself and figure out what who is Sunny and what does she want to do like what are my inner desires because that's not something that we often think about at a young age I think more when you're like a kid and a teenager you're being told like not necessarily who you are but what you can and can't do which can attribute to you not seeking out other things that you might enjoy because like that's you're limited and so you can't discover like other things that you might enjoy because you only have such a limited scope you know yeah um i mean i would i would uh i would disagree i mean when i was a kid i do remember like i mean i had some of the greatest like elementary school teachers that i can that i can think of that we were told like hey what do you want to be when you grow up and like she would i remember she would tell us like literally just like write it down like let your like but that's what i'm saying you're like, tying like what do you want to be to your career yeah but i mean people would put like the you know the wildest things but yeah, you're right though you know you're tying oh, what you want to be with your yeah, career whether you want to be saying, like astronaut or yeah because i'm or not saying that i didn't like have that i'm saying yeah. that like you're so limited and like who you are is tied to like oh what do you want to do as an adult or like you're not thinking about like really the bigger picture as a kid you know oh uh, okay it's okay and no, i see i see where you're coming from with that okay like you're not thinking like what is truly gonna make me happy or like there's just so many things that you don't know to think about yeah and i think that that can be like a draw i don't know if jaw dropping is the right word but it can be a really scary but interesting experience when you're finally left out in like the world to your own devices to mm-hmm. figure out who you are as a person yeah and like or if who you are right now is who you want to be, you know? And I think that comes into, um, I think, something that maybe we've all felt, maybe you felt and I felt, is that what if you identify the person you are right now isn't the person that you want to be? Mm. And, like, you need to change or... um the the version that you thought you liked is no longer the version you like and you want to be someone else and you know that requires change mm-hmm. and change for a lot of people is scary mm-hmm. yeah i can imagine that i mean imagine just i mean we talked about this on a previous episode where like it was a career a career change yeah yeah so like we we went a little bit about it i remember and that's that can be extremely difficult so imagine I can only imagine, like, if you don't like who you are for what's whatever specific reason, like, that would be a very, because of who you are is defining, I guess you're saying, like, it's being defined and you don't want to be that, so it's a lot I of I mean, work. I think we, like, when you look introspectively and you look at yourself, I think sometimes you can be at a point in your life where you're like, I look at myself and I don't like who I am and I know who I want to be. I know that I've had a lot of times in my life, for instance, um, when I met you, I was at a very <laughs> interesting point in my life. Um, I I don't think I was a very good person, and I wasn't doing anything necessarily bad, but I didn't care a lot about the things I should have cared about, and I... When I met you, I was like, man, this person is amazing. And it kind of like changed who I was because I wanted to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And realizing in that moment that I didn't like the person I was or actions I had committed in the past, I had to figure out a way to move forward and become the person I want to be. And that's neither easy or like, a fun process because you do have to identify we've talked about this you do have to identify like the things you don't like about yourself and I was trying to figure out like also what the path towards becoming a better person I remember when I was like kind of changing who I was like you know 
becoming like Sunny 2.0, <laughs> um, there was a lot of feedback from people too because some people don't think people can change. You know, mm. my sister um, at that point we didn't get along very well. She thought it was like a like a fraudulent thing. She was like, "You're not really changing. Like you just want this person to think that you're X, Y, and Z." And it's like, no, I really. I really want to become a better person. I really want to be this version of myself that I know I can be and that I'm not quite there yet. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it, it was it was difficult. And then you get to a point where you feel like, I got to a point where I felt like I am the best version of myself. I love who I am. And I was like, I was happy and I was like high on life. And then just for like a year or two later to feel the exact opposite and feel like who, like go back to who am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? And how do I get there? And I I think about like a lot of times we look at our past selves about past versions of ourselves, happier versions of ourselves and think I need to go back to the person that that girl was. I need to be the old Sunny because the old Sunny was happy and the old Sunny was this. But I don't think it's about being that old version. I think it's becoming a new version of that version, Mm -hmm. which is kind of confusing. But it's, I don't think we ever need to resort back to who we are, but just move forward and, you know, take those good things about, like, older versions, but also, like, continue to work on ourselves. Um, the thing about, like, identity and becoming who you want to be and, like, this, like, whole process is that there's a lot of kind of, like, I think feelings of, like, just feeling lost, you know? Yeah, in the pro- while, while you're trying to discover who you are. No, but I definitely understand what you're talking about. That last point that you made was like, you thought that you want to go revert back to to who you were before. It's more of like, an, like a personal... It's all about growth, like this whole podcast. Like it's yeah. like an evolution. Kind it's of like thing, yeah, you know? it's like, like it's evolving. like Pokemon. It's like Pokemon, yeah. <laughs> you it's know, like, Pokemon. like you become, you continue to evolve into the different versions and. Some versions of you have characteristics from the previous versions, but you're continuing to evolve. And here is, um, you just made me think of something too. Um, something I struggle with is that there are people in my life that have a version of who I was in the past that they love. This version that they think is like worthy of love and that they see as like who I should be. Mm-hmm. And then there's me knowing who I want to be and what I'm trying to work towards. And those two things don't always, you know, align. Yeah. And that can be very hard on, like, the person that's dealing with it. Like, for instance, it's been very hard on me because I, like, I have to realize I can't please everyone with who I am, you know. But I've also got to do what's best by me and not make my decisions based on who other people want me to be. That was the other thing I was going to say is that yeah. there's that other third factor where it's who you, who they think you are, who you know you are, and then who, who they, they want, want you, you to, to be. be. Yeah, because or they because they again, and it might be coming from good intentions because, you know, people, depending on who they are in your life, they might have the best. They might be looking out for you, but. Maybe necessarily that might not be the best idea if it's something that's like it doesn't fit your who you want to actually be. I know? just don't think even with the best intentions, it's no one's place to be like this is who you should be or this is what you should be working towards. Because like what if that doesn't align with actually who you know that you can be and you're going to be just as good of a person if you uh, if you follow what you want to do oh no you know? that's what i'm saying it's that that you can't if for i mean i always i revert again i revert back to like job titles like let's say you want to be because you love doing whatever it is xyz and you want to stay doing that but then some people are telling you well no your actually next step is 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 like something that you're like you never saw yourself doing yeah and some would say oh well you know the part of growing is getting uncomfortable and getting uncomfortable doing like what what you're not like used to doing you've heard this before right like and i get i get that i understand that 
Uh, but I guess for what I'm coming at from with this is that if the, if the person is uncomfortable and realizes like no like it's not that that's not that it's, it's not it's not that they want to stay comfortable in what they're doing they're going to continue learning more and more about that role that they're in and maybe get even better and maybe train people one day but like if you're continuing to pushing someone in a different direction they can confuse them and be like okay so what do I want to do what what, are, what is what do people want me to be and then. Next thing you know, you don't even know what you're doing anymore. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you have to. I think it goes back to like people pleasing too. Is like I yeah. know that that's been my struggle. Is that I am like a chronic people pleaser. I just I've come to understand I can't please all people, but that doesn't stop my desire to make people yeah. happy. And sometimes what's going to make other people happy isn't what's going to make me happy. Yeah, and. So when there's that like misalignment in your life, mm-hmm. it it can cause for like stress and a lot of anxiety and a lot of like, what the heck do I do? Like, who am I? And like, what is going to result in like me being happy? Yeah. But it can result in a lot of self doubt. I know that I've felt like, I feel like I felt a lot more self doubt recently. Um, with all this because i feel like this is exactly kind of what i've been i've been experiencing in my life lately um the search of like who i'm supposed to be and who i am and you know all those things and um i realize a lot of like the outcome results in me like doubting myself and what i'm doing and who i am and if i'm a good person and it's like this spiral of emotions that you feel and sometimes it's just hard when when you don't have like that like confirmation that you're sure of yourself yeah and if you're not sure you're going to continue to spiral and people do that they get stuck in like a loop you know yeah just a loop of like going back and forth and i think that's my fear is like getting stuck in that like like that feedback loop of just doing the same thing and expecting the same results you know they say that's um that's only crazy thing. That's the definition, definition of, of crazy. Insanity. Yeah, insanity uh, yeah. is like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like I've definitely been guilty of that in my life of like just doing exactly that. And I'm definitely trying not to do that anymore. Um, but I think that something that comes about this as well is how do we know when we're doing the right thing? How do we know when we're finally on the right path or what's going to make us happy? I think personally, I think that there is, um, there's usually, um, when you know you're doing the right thing, there's usually some sort of, um, you know, fruit from that labor. There's something that's, that can, that's growing from what you're doing. So like, if you're, you got a new job or, or whatnot, you feel like, Hey, like, what I'm doing, there's there's uh, fruitful things that are positive, uh, in whether it's in your life or in the life of the people that you're working with or the people that you're that you have that you're with in your life. There's positivity in a sense, like growing from that. Um, and that's one that there's like there's signs to like showing. There's signs that you can see, and but there's stuff there's stuff that you might not be able to see, like months or maybe even years down the line. Yeah. Um. But uh, I mean, but then I wouldn't want to say you want to resort to t- people telling you that you're doing better because they can yeah, be biased. Yeah, too, that's the and thing then, is like yeah. it's like outside people. I think it has to come external, from within. Internal factors and ex- there's external and internal factors. You yeah. Know? So it's like and you got to also have people that you can trust to tell you these things. And then, yeah, I mean, it all really depends on your circle of influence that's around you. Um, but personally, I think that there's if there's fruits in that labor that are good. They're good. They're, they're actually like. They're not bad, but they're actually good things happening um, that you can define. I think that's one way to see, like, you know, oh, wait, like, I think this is good. Like, I'm actually making something from this or whatnot. So that's what I think. at least. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, <you> sorry. <laughs> I just was... got, like, like, really confused. Like, you kind of went on. And I just didn't really understand no, what you were Okay, so I'll, re- I'll, I'll revert back. So basically what I was, what I was trying to say is that there if you know you're on the right path there's something good that you can actually define that's good like and it's like leading towards whether it's a goal that you have mm-hmm. uh in your in your life for like let's say you wanted to change you're like oh i want to be a better person so what do you do to be a better person 
maybe you start looking deep inside of you and seeing like, oh, what makes me a bad person? And then you change that. And then you see like, oh, I, after I changed this little thing, more people started to, and then again, it's an external factor. Yeah, I but feel then like there's external have, factors. But I just then, think that you can't take the external factors so seriously seriously because mm -hmm. they can be like i mean then you, it goes back to seeking like external validation and yeah. that's something that's not going to be healthy in growth um for uh, me i think that it has to come from like within you and like acknowledgement that like that you are where you want to be i think at the end of the day that's what it com when it comes to who we are as people we think about like what we want to do and who we want to like how we want to do it and how yeah. we're going to get there and i think when it comes to knowing if you're doing the right thing it's like okay well i'm here now this is what i wanted how do i feel because i yeah. think sometimes we we have these plans and it's like okay i want to do this and you do it and you're like hmm that's not as that, like, was when I that wasn't exactly what i thought i'd yeah. feel and so like you kind of go back in this process of like starting over um, from square one of like okay well i thought this is what i wanted but what do i actually want and so i think like this is something that we don't just do like once in our life it's like a continuous process and it's okay if we get it wrong you know it's okay if you thought that this is what you want to do this is who you want to be and you get to that point where you feel like you've reached what you thought you wanted and it's it's not what you wanted and that's okay like i think to try to like think that we can figure it out is a little like ambitious um because i think who we want to be evolves you know yeah who you wanted to be when you were 15 isn't the same oh yeah and that's what i'm saying is like but the thing is i would say yeah who you want to be evolves however like <laughs> going back to pokemon is that um which is a great analogy, by the way, is that each every time a Pokemon evolves, the the skills that they they had don't disappear. So, like for example, Pikachu, like a uh, uh, Thunderbolt, that Thunderbolt, they still, they still has it, but as it evolves, the that strength that it had, that uh, that skill that it had, got better. Yeah. So it's like Thunderbolt in level three of evolution is like three times as stronger than level one. So what I'm trying to say, <laughs> this is such a good analogy. It's a good analogy. Is that the even though like. When I was a kid, again, I wanted to, like, you know, be an automotive technician. And then I realized, oh, I, I don't really want to do that. However, I developed really good hands-on skills on building things. And that's led to, like, me building even, like, crazy contraptions to computers, servers, all these things. A lot of DIY, lot of stuff, DIY stuff to stuff. get stuff done. Yeah, like, these, and then showing people on how to do these things themselves. And, like, that's, that's a skill that's going to continue. I, I want to build so many cool things in the future. And like that's a skill that I'm going to continue to learning. That doesn't mean that I didn't end up doing what what I wanted to do as a kid. But like that's you just learned evolving. like to do something else while using the skills that you still have. Yes, exactly. Like that's a really great way to put it because yeah. I have like a similar story. Like when I was a kid, and I think I mentioned this in a prior podcast, is that I wanted to be a writer. I loved mm -hmm. writing. I also loved reading for a while. Um, I'm trying to get back into it, um, but. I thought like that that was something I wanted to do. And so when I got to college, I was like, the one thing that I know for sure that I like doing is writing. Mm -hmm. Like that was the only thing in my mind I was sure of that I was interested in. So I was going to be a creative writing major. Mm -hmm. My parents did not think that that was a good idea. Um, so I was a little bit influenced by what they thought as well. And I was like, okay, like maybe like we don't do that. Um, so I went in as like an exploratory major and like kind of like tested out classes to see what else I was interested in. Um, but although I'm obviously didn't end up majoring in like creative writing mm -hmm. and I'm not necessarily like a writer for my job. Again, it goes back to jobs that we define ourselves by. Um, I use that skill of writing in like my everyday life, whether it's sending an email um, outlining articles, um, even like my own personal endeavors. Like obviously we do this podcast and I think it's, it's also helped me become a pretty like 
vocal and um i would say eloquent person like not to pat myself on the back i feel like i can i can speak my mind well because i understand how to put like words together to like get like an emotion out of them yeah and um yeah, I mean, I use it in my everyday life, and you know, I still might like pursue. Like, I definitely still want to write a book. It just won't be the only thing that I do. But that skill has evolved um, over the years. Yeah. Obviously, it's only gotten better as much as I've worked on it too. So I think that's so interesting that you bring up that like the evolution doesn't mean we completely lose what we once were good at. We just learn how to use those skills that we've acquired in like our experiences mm-hmm. to be good at other things as well. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I feel like just comes to mind, I don't know why it did. Um, obviously, I say this all the time. I'm <laughs> on LinkedIn all the time because I don't know. I love LinkedIn. And um, there is there was a post that said, be... I don't know if it said be brave enough or like something like be brave enough to fail at something new. And I think that's it's so beautiful because like when you're trying a new thing, like people think if it's meant to be like you'll just be good at it. But no, like those things take such hard work. Like when you're like for if you're switching careers or if you're just trying a new hobby, like being good at something takes hard work, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, you know yeah, I mean, I take this podcast as a perfect example. We want to grow it to a certain level. Yeah, where we've we've become right now currently in our level. I imagine if we, as long as we continue to continue to make episodes and shoot, we learn, uh, we see the analytics uh, X Y Z. Like a month from now, or the ten episodes from now, are going to be way better than maybe we'll have twenty subscribers yeah. on YouTube instead <laughs> of 10. ten. Yeah, exactly, it doubles <laughs> or whatnot. And that's the thing is like, um, yeah, like that's the thing is like as long as you continue at something like you're gonna end up getting better at it even if it's just like you just end up making like one uh, something like one percent better whether we make the thumbnails better or whether it's me talking better and finally getting used to speaking on this podcast yeah i got some feedback (laughs) from a fan i'm just kidding it was it was a family member who listens to my podcast and i'm pretty sure those are the only people right now listening and some of my friends (laughs) and my wig people because they shout out to everyone listening yeah because i send it to them um I appreciate their listens, though. Um, but they're like, Caesar doesn't speak. Caesar needs to speak more. So I always like this is this is the issue too. Just to go a little off topic, is I look at I don't know if you can see on the camera, but sometimes I pause and I look at Caesar, and he'll just be like, Yeah, because I'm I'm processing, you know, like I'm trying to. <laughs> well, he, he I'm thinks, like, <laughs> he thinks so hard on things. Like so, when I ask him a question, he's like. <laughs> Like a deer in the headlights, and it makes me laugh because for me it's very easy to like to start to come mm-hmm. up with an answer, um, but maybe me and Caesar will do some practice off camera. Because the thing is, I Caesar and I like have like these kind of conversations. Yeah. I feel like on the daily, you know, we'll go and sit in a coffee shop or we'll have dinner yeah. and we'll have great conversations. So Caesar's a good conversationalist, despite what you may think based off this podcast. He is a really good conversationalist. But like he gets so nervous when you put the microphone in front of him, which is funny because he films YouTube videos and he's gotten a lot better with his videos. But we were just actually talking about last night. Um how the first video that Caesar shoot shot, like for his channel, when I reviewed it, and he looked sounded so robotic, and I was laughing, and I was kind of hurtful, so I do apologize for this. <laughs> but it was not Caesar. I was like, "Who is this man on cameras? Why is he acting so weird?" And it's because he was so nervous and not used to it. But now he's a lot more comfortable. And it's like that's the thing. It's like for me. Even right now, like how I'm talking to you, I feel like I'm a little more, I get a little more comfortable when, um, not to say like more knowledgeable on the subject. It's just that I want to make sure that I say something that is valuable. But maybe yeah. I, sh- maybe, but maybe I shouldn't be always thinking that way because then yeah, I get stuck I think in like. You never like, know uh, what could be valuable yeah. to someone too. I like to say like a lot of things because I never know what's gonna someone's gonna what's gonna stick with someone. Like I think yeah. about like to a lot of my teachers, like some of like the most random things they stuck stuck to me and i'm not sure they were thinking about that in the moment yeah so i think like that's why i'm like just have a conversation because you never know what's going to stick with someone um or how you can impact someone by us just having this like vulnerable organic conversation yeah. um about these things um I mean, it's part of growth you know no, it is just part a of part of yeah. like you know 
It's also think, part of finding out who you are too. Yeah, as well, so. exactly. Like finding, oh, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> segue. Thank you. Um, finding your voice. I think that's something oh, when dang. you're finding your identity, finding your voice. I was just talking to my mom about this yesterday. Um, I told her I was like, you know, and my mom said it too. I've mentioned this before. I've always been labeled as a very emotional person. And my mom, it's crazy, and this is how I know my, my mom's daughter, is she was saying the same words to me without me even having this conversation with you. She goes, I've always been labeled as emotional with my heart and my sleeves. But that emotion isn't emotional. It's passion. And I was like, finally, <laughs> someone understands. Because, like, I'm not emotional simply because, like, I'm a crybaby or because, like, you know, I get angry. Easily. Like, I feel all emotions so deeply because I am fueled by passion. When it comes to certain subjects and topics and things that, like, I like, there's just passion. And that passion is a mixture of emotions a lot of times. Sometimes it's sadness. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's happiness. And, um... For a long time, that was something I was so ashamed about with myself. I hated that part of myself, and I also I tried to hide it, and I also let a lot of people walk over me. I did not have a voice when I was, like, a young adult and, like, a kid or a teenager. I just let people walk over me, and it resulted in a lot of situations that made me unhappy and a lot of friendships that weren't f- fruitful or intentional and... But it was all in a lot of fruit, like not fruitful relationships. And that was, that was hard. And then when I got to college, I think is when I actually started to not just find who I was, but find my voice and, you know, speak up for myself. And it's, it's changed. You know, I think me finding that ability has led to a lot of great things for me. I'm, I would say I'm where I'm at in my life because of like who I am as a person and because I found that voice mm-hmm. and because I'm willing to speak on what I know and willing to have conversations. And, you know, I used to be really scared to like speak my mind or even just to have a simple conversation. A lot of it had a lot of anxiety, a lot of social anxiety. And now I'm getting better at like having these conversations at work or having these conversations in our personal life. You know, you and I have had to have a lot of difficult conversations. That I did not have experience having before um so i think finding your voice is such a important part of who we are and you know our identity you know Mm -hmm. that that finding your voice is really what makes you how we're talking in the beginning of uh who you are when you when someone asks you like who who are you or what do you do or whatever the case is so i mean being being able to identify that voice and maybe even when you're telling someone about these things like being able to be vocal about it like can show to people like oh wow like that person is really passionate about that yeah. you know about that specific and i think thing. sometimes people don't want to because of a fear of like what people will think but at the end of the day like you know we all have should be able to be like like heard out like i don't know if that makes sense but like we should hear other people out you know and like what they have to say and um yeah i just feel like that that was like a game changing moment in my life was just finding my voice and i think that really has helped me you know grow in a lot of ways because Mm -hmm. um you've got to advocate for yourself too and what's best for you and you can't do that without a voice and that's what i wasn't doing before i was advocating for myself mm-hmm. i was just letting people do whatever they wanted to me and treat me however and now with this voice i i don't allow that and i've realized like what i can and cannot accept in my life and that's not something that a lot of people without voices do or don't feel like they have a voice they're voiceless you know I don't think they're voiceless. I mean, not to say that they're completely voiceless, but like, I mean, that's why there's people that you know not to get like in, in this area of uh, of the of life in the world is like you know that's why people advocate for people who don't have a voice. You know, when you talk about certain things or or certain subjects or whatever the case is. Um, oh, that's a that's a good example because when I was in college, I worked for a well, I did an internship with this nonprofit called the Children's Campaign. Mm-hmm. 
and their whole mission was to advocate for those who often don't have a voice, which mm-hmm. is children, um, because like there were like in like Florida specifically, there are a lot of weird laws and like loopholes with like, for instance, like child marriage and all that kind of stuff. And so like they advocated for kids who traditionally don't have like they have voices, but don't have a big enough voice to make change mm-hmm. at times. Yeah. Or aren't taken as seriously, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when you used to work there and like all the stuff that you you worked there for free, basically. Actually, you were interning. Yeah. You were interning there. But. but yeah, I worked there for free. Um, that was another thing. I think internships are a scam. Unpaid internships. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's just my hot take. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, um, you know, your voice is important and we all have the right to one. And, you know, I think that it's okay um, to, you know, do a little soul searching, like reevaluate yourself and not do it based off what other people think you should be. I think that's the most important thing is that at the end of the day, the only person that needs to be happy with you is you. And sometimes like changing that isn't going to happen overnight. Most times, if at all, it's never going to happen overnight. I know that um, I'm still a work in progress. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to change about myself, but I also have to reevaluate, do I want to change them because I want to change them or because there's people influencing making me think that this is what I need to change about myself? I think that's another distinction that needs to be made too. And that's hard to kind of like, sometimes it all gets jumbled in your mind, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, do I actually not like this about myself or do I not like it because other people don't like it? And this is something, this is a quote that I love and I've heard so many times is like, I am not going to make myself smaller just because like you can't handle it. I don't, ah, man, I need to look up the quote. I'll find it. Yeah, we can can pause um, it here. No, we don't need to pause. You can talk. You can do some. What do you think? I mean, I was going to say. Sorry, (laughs) Jonas Brothers video is playing. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was going to mention that. I know that, yeah, you're right that that there is, um, I think when someone wants to, if if you're being, again, these are the external factors I was talking about. Like if something externally is telling you, um, and not to say that what that external factor is uh, can be right or wrong, but it's up to you at the end of the day to realize whether that external factor is right or wrong. And you have to, uh, you have to, uh, there's a word, I can't think of it right now. Basically, you just have to like, not test it out, but you have to like, think about whether that is right or wrong, basically. Like, I'm thinking, there's a word that I just can't think of right now that basically summarizes that. Like, you have, just have to test it out. And like, like, oh, if someone's saying X about me. Is that really right or wrong? Like, am I... Because, like, for example, if what you're... If what they're saying is wrong about you, if it's hurting yourself or a bunch of people, like, maybe they can be right. Maybe yeah. they're, they are right about that. Like, especially if it's something that you're physically doing. But if it's something, like, that's not physical, it's more, like, you know... Uh, in you then yeah that's different well a good example would be like oh this person like talks a lot they should talk less like that's not valid input like it's like what makes why how is them talking like about like an issue like you know and i think that comes like this comes oh, back okay. to the um the quote that i have mm-hmm. it says don't make yourself small so others feel more comfortable um you know a lot of times like people want other people to change around them because of like comfort Mm. like making it more comfortable for them but like for instance if you're someone who's just outspoken and has a voice and is willing to speak up when things are wrong like that's not a bad thing if people are uncomfortable with that that's not a reflection of you that's a reflection of them and i think that's something that you have to think about when you're growing and you're learning is like is this is this a reflection of who you are or a reflection of who the person saying this is Mm -hmm. you know and so it can be hard to do too like obviously you always want to look at yourself um i like to think that i like like brush through myself with like a fine fine tooth comb to see like everything like i want it all out on the table um and you've really got to do that like 
we've got to go in recognizing, yes, we all have faults. And we've got to be willing to work on the things that obviously do hurt other people um, or aren't, like, the best for ourselves. But at the same time, like, you've also got to realize, like, is this inherently bad or is it just something that does, makes people uncomfortable because they have other issues, you know? And um, I just like that quote, like, don't make yourself small for other people. Yeah. Because I feel like that's something I've experienced where people want me to change just to make them more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like, I deserve to be the person I want to be. And, like, who's to say you get to tell me who that is? Mm -hmm. And I just, I just, I feel a certain way when, I, I just feel like I've experienced that in my life too. Um, I had a, I haven't thought, stopped thoughting about, I had a uh, thoughting. <laughs> I literally cannot speak this morning. Um, I haven't stopped thinking about this since I got this text message. And this was like a year ago. I got a text message from my cousin Shane. And it was a drawing of me. And I might send it to you so you can put it in the podcast. And it was, like, me going like this. And, mm. like, there's, like, you know, brightness inside me. But I'm, like, holding it back. And she was, like, I feel like you hold all this light inside you back. And, like, that was her feelings. And I don't think she was wrong to say that. But I'm, like, if only you, only you understood, like, why the light in me kind of isn't shining on everyone else it's like because i don't feel that light right now you know being given the name for instance our names are also a part of our identity being given the name sunny you know like the sun um there was always this idea that you know when i'm a positive person i'm a happy person i can't be a sad depressed person with the name sunny <laughs> like there's just this like kind of like weight i had to carry with this name and, you know, people in the past, I have been this, like, you know, very bright, bubbly, like, person and positive person. And I still have some of those qualities. And I do try to be positive And, like, you know, I try to bring good connotation to my name. And, but at that time when she sent that, I was like, you don't understand why that light has disappeared, why that spark has gone out. I was like, there's so many things in my life that you don't know. And it's not that I'm holding light back. It's that, like, the light is, in, is barely there in me right now. And I'm trying to find how to engage that light, how to light that light again. And, um, you know, um, it kind of hurts when people can't recognize that maybe there's a reason for these things. I remember I was in the same situation at work where this leader was like, I basically told me that she wished like that like where's the sunny that like was like this like when you first got here you were so x y and z and i was like have you ever considered why i'm not x y and z anymore like what factors could be contributing to why i'm not like that anymore and i told like i told someone about it I was like it's just hurtful because you don't consider like things that could have happened that have taken those traits away that have made things different and you know, um, I'm not asking the person to take responsibility. I'm asking them to consider, like, why, maybe look as to why that could be. Like, ask the questions, you know. Don't just assume this person's changed and they've changed for, like, bad reasons or they're just not wanting to be the person they were. Like, ask the questions. Ask if everything's okay. Ask what's contributing to that. And I feel like that's something that we don't do. And it's so easy. Just ask the questions. You know, don't pry. Like, you know, you, there's ways to go about it. But just check in, you know? Mm -hmm. And those people don't do is they don't check in. Is that they don't, they just assume. Yeah, and, they just assume that they know what's going on. Or this is the other thing too. And this is like, I think, I think this is even an issue that I can even call on my own. Is like, there's a way... There's a way for people to it's all about delivery. Mm. So that's basically what I'm trying to say. Is like there's a way if you want to ask, if you want if you want someone to understand you, you can't be like like imagine this, this is a good example. Imagine trying to t talk to a three year old about a very you know high level math question. Like how are you first of all how are you supposed to 
like, you know, how are you supposed to teach a, a child calculus if they barely even know basic math? Yeah. So you don't yell at them calculus and tell them like, you know, a squared. What is that derivative? Yeah, like they're gonna be confused as hell, and then like they're gonna just be like, obviously not even understand you. So in order, in order to, in order to, in order to communicate well with someone, you have to, not to say you have to get down to their level. They're not like a low. Don't don't look at them as a lowly person. Yeah, it's just more of like coming, that, meeting them where they're at. Where they're at, and it's like about that. that I need to find that video clip. Uh, we got to put it in the other episode, but it's about that. Uh, you know the the animation you showed me where. I'm it, gonna play like a yeah. little sound though from it because that's so funny. Yeah, basically like. It's just you gotta you have to like empathize with them yeah. and be there with them versus trying to like yell at them from a high like a high level you know. So basically, this clip is about like Bonet's Brown take on empathy versus sympathy. So what is empathy, and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy. It's a, it, very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions, where empathy is relevant, and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. (laughs) Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, (laughs) it's bad, uh uh-huh. No, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling rarely if ever does an empathic response begin with at least I had a yeah and we do it all the time because you know what someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. At least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. (laughs) John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now, I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. I like love that so much. Um, And it's funny is that (laughs) The reason I came across that video was an empathy training at Target. Um, But that is something that stuck with me because it's so right. Rarely does something like helpful start with at least. And I feel like that has been a trained response for people for a long time. And we, we previously didn't live in a very empathetic world. And now people are becoming more of the difference between empathy and sympathy. It used to be like, oh, be sympathetic. But... Really, it's like if you break your leg and I say, well, at least you got one good leg, that's not going to make you feel better. But there's also a recognition that maybe there's nothing I can say that can make you feel better. But I'm like, I understand your emotions. Please come to me if you're feeling any type of way. It's like recognizing that maybe there's not things that you can do to fix it, but there's a support that you can give and there's connection. I think that's my biggest thing. I feel like me and Caesar talk about this all the time. Yeah, we do. I'm a, I know I've brought that up before. Um, but it's, I mean, it's true. And, and like, again, I, part of what I, why I was bringing that up was because um, if you really want to, whether whether it's you want to, um, I mean, I wouldn't say sell a message, but I mean, a lot of corporate America does this is they create advertisements around empathizing people, whether you agree with the message or not, they 
they're able to se- they're able to sell something to people when they can empathize with like whether it's a cause or whatever the case is and you're not you're never going to get across someone um in a certain way if you can't empathize with them if you're just if you're just sympathizing with them or if you're just yelling at them yeah so but you know there's a lot of different cases or whether that works or not you know they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease but it's still gonna it's still not gonna work if you do it in that way which is what one thing i've learned is like you know you gotta sit down and talk to people listen whether you agree with someone or not doing that is all like 20 times doing that is what people normally don't do so yeah yeah. i mean i think though too um there has to be a willingness to listen yeah um if people aren't willing to listen then like it's all kind of pointless yeah um and sometimes i think i know people in my life that don't do that as much um that struggle with listening because they're just you know i'd like to say like you know some people are more passionate about certain things and sometimes it like you know it causes like you know blinders um they put these blinders on and um there's no convincing either way it has to do with like mindset too i think there's so many other factors that go into that as well Mm -hmm. that go into empathy like being in the right mindset and all of this um but you know yeah i don't even know how we got to like empathy and sympathy to Uh, be honest i was talking about the whole um and how i was saying like that's why people don't uh communicate very well which is a part of like which is, which is those external factors that people oh will, yeah will give so it's like yeah whether they're right or wrong that's the thing is like they that's the thing is whenever i at least personally whenever i hear somebody out i'm always hearing them out and i'm, I'm never assuming that they're wrong yeah because um, again this might be a little off topic but i'm um, again that's what they've come to learn and you you can't just tell someone that they're what they've learned is wrong. There's a way whether you 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 believe it's wrong morally, ethically, or whatever the case is, you have to find a way to communicate to, to them and find uh find some sort of uh, something that 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 you have in common in order to even try to communicate with them in the first place. But yeah, I mean, that's a different conversation. That's a totally different yeah, podcast. It's a lot. Totally different podcast. Well, yeah, but, yeah, I think I think we talked about this too. Communication. Um, is an important part like of our life not just how we communicate with others though if we want to tie it back is how we um communicate with ourselves you mm-hmm. know um i saw a really great tiktok as i always <laughs> do um, i feel like i just referenced so many tv shows tiktoks and um stuff because i'm like all over the internet you know um and i saw a really good tiktok that was discussing um self-love which i recently made a tiktok and a reel on that was from our other podcast um a lot of people take like self-love is like looking in the mirror and saying, I'm beautiful. I love myself. I am the most powerful woman in the world. And affirmations. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing about that and what she addresses in the TikTok is that sometimes like we can't say those things to yourself when we don't believe it. And the idea is that if you say it, you'll believe it. But like, why can't we recognize that this is where I'm at right now. Like, you know, I don't necessarily love myself right now. And it's okay to struggle with that. It's, you shouldn't feed yourself lies either. Like, if you wake up and you say, I love myself simply because you think that that's going to make you love yourself. Like, but in that moment, it's not true. Like, why mm-hmm. would you lie to yourself too? Like, I think recognizing that like for recognizing in the moment that you don't, it's like, okay, well, why? And then pinpointing the issues as well. And so um, I, I I thought that was very like an interesting take because so many people will just tell you, you need to love yourself and say your affirmations and know how powerful you are and know what a boss babe you are. Um, in reality, it's like, it's not that simple. And I don't think anything worth doing in life is that simple, which is why like when we try to create these hacks, like this is how I feel great every day. Um, it's just kind of ridiculous, you know? You know, um, I was talking to one of my coworkers, Alyssa, and Alyssa, if you're listening, you are just incredible. I love her. Like, me and her, we get along so well. Like, we're so alike. Um, she's also so 
Uh, she has so so much great insight. 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 I don't know what's up with my words today. I cannot speak. Um, she has so much great insight, and I feel like I can, for one, trust her to tell me the truth. Um, but she's always got such great advice. Like uh, she's so smart. Um, but um, man, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> I think I was gonna say she has. Let's see, my friend Alyssa. She's great. Uh, <laughs> dang. Ah, uh, what was I saying? I'm sorry, I was about to sneeze. But what was I saying? What was I saying beforehand? I think you're gonna. I think you're going to. Um, damn. Hold on. Now I'm trying to think because you're. You're. I was listening to that whole uh, conversation with you about you talking about how your your coworkers. I mean, the person you work with is cool. Um. Damn. Damn. Hold on. I felt like that was going to be really good, too. And I can't remember for the life of me what it was going to be. Because we were talking about, you know, self-love and self-affirmations. And I want you to keep all this in, by the way. Just, yeah, I'll keep it fine. in. Yeah. It's fine. Um, self-love and self-affirmations and all of that good stuff. Um, I have no idea what it was. Yeah, I, I can't. I feel so bad. I was trying to figure Alyssa, out where you're going with Alyssa too. is giving me such great insight, and I can't remember what I was going to feed on at that moment. I think it was something related to, like, you know, we had conversations about, um, oh, I remember. Now I remember. We have conversations a lot, like, we'll talk, and um, she, I told her, I was like, I feel guilty when, like, for instance, if I have, like, a really, really productive day, if my productivity every day doesn't look the same, like, if, like, for instance, I was productive all week and then Friday I'm just really struggling to get as much done as I did on the previous days, I feel so guilty because I'm like, oh, why can't I be as productive, like, every day? Like, why can't there just be such a consistency? And she was like, it's not really human to think that we can have, like, the same level of productivity every day. Like, and I thought about that. I was like, that's, that's really true. And like, I think the same goes for like other areas of our life. Like there are just going to be days that I have that are bad days. Like we can try to offset the bad days and like prevent them from happening. But I just think there's things we can't account for. And there's things that are going to make upset, uh, make us upset. There's obviously things that we know make us upset and like we identify triggers and we try to learn how to cope with those but then there's things that you just can't predict or and you know it's okay to have a bad day and I feel like sometimes we push this idea that like this intoxicating happiness and while I would love to feel that and maybe it's just because I don't feel that right now like I feel like I'm a happy person but I'm not like intoxicatingly happy um it's just not realistic. It's not a realistic expectation to set. And I think it can make people actually upset when they see like, why can't I feel this way? Like, why can't I have this like same outlook? Because mm -hmm. I look up to people. I, I'm very inspired by a lot of people that um, I surround myself with or encounter. But I think one of the greatest things that's helped me too, when I meet someone, for instance, the um, team I work with, like our whole team, like I am forever inspired by everyone on our team their interests their hobbies just who they are as people and what makes me not feel like bad about myself obviously because I'm like so like wow these people are amazing is like to recognize that they also have areas that they struggle in or when they're open and honest with me about like you know I've been in your shoes and like it's you know or like you know they They've just, they've been there and they've struggled too. And it kind of makes it feel like, okay, like this person doesn't have it all together too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my thing too, is like, I'm someone who wants to figure this all out. You know, I want to have the answer to who I am and what am I doing here? But the idea is that, you know, it might take a long time for me to figure out what that means for me and that's okay. And it's not it's not the end of the world if I don't have everything figured out. But I'm someone who's impatient and wants to have it all figured out. I want to know what am I doing here, like, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all want that. We all want, we, all want to, we all want to know what we need to do 
in order to not only succeed in our own lives, but also, you know, grow. Yeah. To grow within our lives and grow and hopefully, you know, not only grow within ourselves, but help other people grow too. I think that's another thing too that we haven't talked about yet is on a, in an episode, maybe we'll save that one for another one is like when you get to a certain place and you've grown so much and uh, whether you learn something, you can now, you know, you know, like a tree does, like, you know, spread some leaves, spread some seeds and, yeah. and help other people grow or help other things grow too as well. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's my goal too is um, I want to help other people um, gr- not just grow, but <laughs> my sister's literally calling me right now. Um, I want to help other people grow and just, you know, feel like good about where they're going and, you know, I think this is something that I lacked in my life growing up um, is this kind of like insight and there's definitely a lot more of it online now. Um, But I think too with growth, it's just, it's never going to get any easier. And I feel like I say that every podcast, it's really not going to get any easier to grow. And, but like once you are on this growth journey, you're obviously never done, but you definitely can sprout some seeds to help other people grow and to help them become who they want to be. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy how the how the world works and how growth, just the process we go through and how many times we go through go through this. I'm sure, like in five years, I'll feel like I'm in a different place as well, but still trying to, you know reach whatever goal I have then and um you know I think as like humans we want to search for this level of comfort in our lives and it's like once I get here this is when I'll be comfortable but then there's something else we want and then it's like okay once I get this then I'll be comfortable and then once I get this uh, then I'll be comfortable so I think a part of growth too is like understanding that there's always gonna be more like I don't think there's ever going to be a point where you're like yep this is enough for me because I think part of growth is recognizing that like you're always capable of more Mm -hmm. um and I think it's okay too to be okay with where you're at like if you reach a point in your life where like I am happy and I'm like you know I'm I don't know the word I can't remember the word but um if you reach a point where you know you have everything you could ever want, um, then, yeah, like, that's that's okay. It's not to say you still can't grow, but um, I just feel like, m- me personally, I'm always going to want to reach for the stars more. I literally had a conversation with my, um, with the CEO of my company this week, and it was about, like, professional development. And I just told him, I was like, I just know there's so many things that I could do to help like the company. There's so many different things I could put my hands in and I'm just really excited. Like, I just want to continue to make sure I don't grow stagnant in my role. I want to just like, I just want to continue to grow as an individual here as well. Like, obviously I'm growing my personal life, but I want to continue to do what I can to, you know, evolve. And he was like, giving me some really, really good advice. And he asked me, you know, what is it that you want to do and like that's the like number one question obviously that's a question that we all want to have the answer to but I'm like a multi-passionate person and picking just one thing is so difficult for me because I want to do it all like when it comes to marketing especially because I work in marketing I work in SEO and that's just one aspect of marketing there's so many different areas marketing that I would love to have my hands in And so it's hard to be like, what does this end goal look like for me? Because I think no matter where I am, there's always going to be this fire inside me to be like, okay, what's next from here? What's next from here? Similar to like how, you know, at one point we just wanted to go to the moon. Now it's let's go to Mars. Let's go to these different planets. And I'm like, I feel like I have that same fire in my heart where like, I'm never going to be fully satisfied. Doesn't mean I can't be happy, but I'm always going to be wanting more. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a way to want more in a healthy way. No, there is. Um, and it's, it's it's knowing, I mean, not to say that you're limited. I don't want to say you should limit yourself on uh, what you want to do in your life. It's just more of like, you have all of these, like, think of a tree, you know, all these, you have the trunk, and then you have the branches. And like each branch can like, 
whether it's like personal development, career growth, family, you know, whether you want to have kids, and then there's community. Like you're only one, you're only one person, so the tree has to evenly distribute. You know, its branches accordingly. Like if, if a tree were only, if a tree were to grow only in one direction, it would be lopsided and fall apart. You know, that's why it, it, it based on you know the the sunlight it gets and all the energy that I can that it has in a day. You know, talking about like our how much we can do in a day. Yeah. Um, it grows evenly and it spreads to these different parts of the tree's life accordingly. And I I use that as an analogy because we if we overdo certain things if we try to do too much then we're gonna we're gonna in a sense we're limiting ourselves with trying to do or attempting to do a million things at once and you don't you, it, you it's very difficult to grow that way you're only one person yeah so yeah, even when it comes to your role like that you know you're only one person too at the end of the day i'm technically two people though. oh yeah technically you're right because i'm a twin yeah (laughs) there's two of me out there but yeah i think you know if you're hoping that we answer who are you and where why are you here um we don't have the answers (laughs) i hope that these um what we said in today's podcast is a way for you to find an answer um i think at the end of the day if i had one last thing to say about it would be just to what uh, something that leads you to your answer is as long as it's is a it's positive, you know, it, it can it can help people. Obviously, it helps yourself. I think that's one way to find out who you are. You know, I think um, we lack we 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 need more of that in the world today than any than any time. At least in my opinion, like we need more more things that people find themselves either what they do. If you want to describe that of who you are or or who you are as a person, like. It can really help out. I think think my last little bit on like who are we and why are we here is um, I don't think you need to label yourself too. Like when I think of myself, I think of myself as so many things and I think that's okay. I think you have the right to be whoever you want to be. And if that's like, if you attribute a million different things to yourself, that's fine too. Like it's, I don't think there's an answer, a one worded answer, you know, like this is who I am. I just think you need to make sure you align with who you want to be and not who the world wants you to be. And also like not put too much pressure on yourself to like tie your worth to your job role or something else in your life. Um, Cause we so often we do that. Like our worth is defined by how successful we are at work. And I don't think that, um, we need to do that and um yeah i think that um you know this whole growth journey is a process of finding out who you are and what your purpose your individual purpose is here and it's okay if it takes a while to figure that out some people don't figure it out for a long time and there's no shame in that because this is a long journey and you know even at the end of it, we might not have all the answers. And sometimes it's okay. We have to be okay with the unknown. Yeah. But yeah, that has been the Growing Together podcast with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. We hope you join us next week on our next episode. This is always available on YouTube and all Spotify and Apple Podcasts, all the streaming platforms. So um, we appreciate you for listening. And yeah. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye.